Hi, I'm Shirley Rustin, I'm Myra Kul, and Dr. Vyakarnam here. He's a director of the Bettany Center of, for Entrepreneurship at Cranfi. He's also a co founder and director of Hasselator India, chairman of Kisan Hub, and on the advisory board of Smart Vineyards. He's also a trustee of the Jet Initiative, and uh, he worked in an industry for several years before completing his MBA and PhD at Cranfi. He's a multiple personality in academic, a practitioner, advisor, mentor for uh, government policies and entrepreneurial ecosystems and entrepreneurial education. He was also awarded Best Entrepreneurship Professor at the Second Asian Business School Awards in 2011. So, so you have focused so much into entrepreneurship and uh, mentored many in UK and in India. So how do you look at the entrepreneurs in India and UK? What can they learn from each other? What is the difference? Okay, it's a great question because the, um, the overall objectives of entrepreneurs both in UK and, and in India would be pretty much the same thing, which is to create self-employment of some kind, to create job-creating businesses, to enjoy life uh, without having to be uh, working for organizations and so on. The main difference is the starting places are, are different for uh, UK entrepreneurs and Indian entrepreneurs. UK entrepreneurs largely have got much better access to resources. There's more money around in the system. There are tax breaks for investors. Uh, there are grants available. There are co-working spaces, incubators, accelerators, and so forth. India, that whole area is still emerging. And we have a second layer for young Indian entrepreneurs especially, is that the families are not yet always ready for uh, young people to go into entrepreneurship. So they start off with a cultural baggage, if you like. We start off with having challenges of not seeing enough role models in entrepreneurship and they, from whom they can learn about how to raise money, how to pitch, how to get their marketing, commercialization, all these things sorted out. That ecosystem is a bit more mature in many parts of the UK. So on the whole, uh, the objectives and the types of things that they want to do are similar. The starting places are different, I would say. Okay. Thank you, sir. So, uh we have this entrepreneurship course going on uh, in Myra and how important do you think uh, an MBA student or any graduate should have this as a coursework in the curriculum? So this is a, a, a dilemma for most business schools whether to put entrepreneurship as a core curriculum item or to have it only as an elective. In my view if there is a core curriculum it could be a very short uh, introductory curriculum which opens up the possibility for all students to learn a little bit about what there is. It's like in uh, reading and writing, you can't do it without some grammar if you like. You know? So, same way, to having exposure to other options for your future careers as young graduates is a good idea. But to actually dive deeper into entrepreneurship, I think should be left probably as an elective, where students may be coming up with some idea that they want, then they're looking for help to make it happen, and the learning can be aligned to the objectives. So by coupling the learning with the desire to start, then the learning is more effective. So um, I think there's, a, there's an issue here between where and when and how to get entrepreneurship uh, taught. And finally, there are two types of curriculum. There's education about entrepreneurship, there's education for entrepreneurship. I'm much more in this camp that says education is for entrepreneurship, which means we can help people to start things. Okay. So giving them a lot of exposure to how to do stuff. Okay. Thank you so much. So um, this entrepreneurial mindset that you have taught us in the coursework, how can we cultivate with uh, such courses or in outside or in general the way we develop? Yeah, the entrepreneurial mindset is a really uh, interesting thing. I think it's relevant also uh, as people grow inside a corporate to have this mindset that basically, you know, to summarize it says, I seek forgiveness rather than permission. Mm -hmm. Right? That is one of the things that entrepreneurs do. They act first and then they correct it later. I don't mean like some crooked entrepreneurs, you know, borrowing money and not knowing how to pay it back. You have to have all the right uh, governance in place. But basically, that's an attitude of mind that you need to have that requires self-belief and self-confidence. Uh, it requires you to be doing things all the time and not being afraid of failure. So the way to get into bigger projects, bigger companies, bigger startups is by taking small steps. You know, as we saw the video yesterday, inch by inch, you can get there. And just build up confidence all the time. 
I would encourage all students always to be trying to do something, whether it's a student society, a sports thing, something that they're doing, building up their uh, networks, their confidence, connections. So, uh, like for an entrepreneur, for an aspiring uh, wedding entrepreneur, what books would you suggest? Or three books you can suggest? Okay, this is uh, great because, you know, I'm thinking to myself, uh, three books, uh, two books, why limit oneself just to two or three books? What might be the things that we might read as an entrepreneur? Because actually some entrepreneurs are voracious readers. When they're not working on their ideas or being with their family, they're traveling, doing that, anything, they're reading something. In answer to your question, I would say that Walter Isaacson's book on Steve Jobs is probably a great place to start right now because Apple is famous. Everybody knows the product, everybody is touched one, if not owning one. So I think the founder behind that, the biographical aspect of uh, Steve Jobs, I think he learned a lot about uh, things through that. So that's a great book. It was very well written. The English quality is very high in that on the whole. And then I would say, actually take an autobiography of anybody that's achieved something, a respected achievers. You know, not just uh, film stars and so on, who may also have achieved. But actually autobiographies maybe of scientists, of uh, engineers, of leaders, the Tatas of this world, people like that, to read those because those are hugely inspirational. So I'll say biographical books. Secondly, for entrepreneurship, read something practical as well. Things on lean startups and business models and that kind of stuff, marketing and finance and venture capital. So there's a section of books on really down to earth practical things that one might want to read. And then I would say thirdly, actually, why not read well-written novels? and well-written poems which inspire uh, a feeling of depth. So maybe books on science and technology, maybe exploring artificial intelligence or the human genome program or something. This broadens the mind. Because when the mind is broader and you have this inquiring mind, you also become more alert to opportunity. You see things, you start to see things and start to make connections which you otherwise wouldn't. And that's a magical aspect of uh, entrepreneurial behavior is being able to connect dots. So by reading these different books, different types of books, I would say, you would probably open up your mind to more ideas. So basically get inspired by great leaders, autobiographies, and get some ideas through practical stuff. Practical stuff. Exactly. Just open it strategies. And yes. And I would say increasingly now, you know, there's a lot of good material in blogs and videos as well. So the internet is full of stuff. Do not substitute uh, books with the internet by all means. But add that to the uh, to the list of things you might want to do. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, sir. So, uh, if someone is pitching to you for an investment of a startup, so what would you uh, look for most from that uh, startup? I think the uh, clarity of the uh, proposition would be the first thing for me. Um, the team that's presenting, do they come across as a coherent team with a passion and capacity for execution? And, and then have they actually thought through the practicalities, the number crunching, the evidence behind it, and they done their homework. So how much depth homework have they done before coming to see me? So if I talk about a competitor or something, you know, they're not tripped up. I remember uh, one young entrepreneur coming to see me saying there's no competition in our field. But I had Googled that idea before they came to the meeting. And I said, what about these five or six? In other words, that person had not thought enough about the project. And so it was not an investable person. They had not done the homework. So that was uh, So good quality value proposition, good team. Those are two things I'm looking for. Okay, thank you, sir. So uh, you're first time here in Maya. So how yes. was your experience? Well, I've come in March. So my experience in Maya is it's hot. <laughs> Definitely very hot. But the rooms and facilities are amazing. The architecture is very interesting. It draws a breeze by being at the top of the hill. So physically, it's a very good place. The hospitality is great for people like me who are coming from far away. They are very well looked after. And overall, the student uh, body also have caught them at the wrong time. They are busy with placements and so on. Uh, but I can see that Maya is working very hard to make sure that companies come on site and, uh, and they're able to expose the students to opportunities within the industry. So I think overall I left with a very positive impression. Myra being in Mysore, it's a beautiful heritage city as well, means that it has got something else, a little extra about it. It's not just in another 
another place. Yeah. I'm very glad, sir. So, uh, what would advice would you like to give for my students? Uh, well, the, the students I've met so far, the vast majority, are very keen on getting careers and jobs in industry. So, open up your mind to the possibility of becoming entrepreneurs as you go forward. You know, you might get your industry experience in displacement or something, but just imagine yourself becoming job creators to really make a difference to your nation and to your community. That's what I would ask. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.